Hi guys. Welcome back to another episode of Wine and Spirits <laughs> Podcast. Uh, hey guys, we're going to start it out with some wine. No way. Are we drinking wine? Are we no. drinking wine? We're, drink, we're drinking wine. What are we doing? In this one, this beauty, I actually got it. Um, I didn't even look at what kind of wine it was yet. I got it because I love the design of the bottle. It's called Intrinsic. And it is a Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, I, it's a 2018. I'm not going to read the back yet. Haven't we're going to try this. to pick up the, the hints gonna, of yeah, flavor we're gonna see, first. We're going to see if we can pick up what we can pick up first yes. before reading it. Did you it, go bucket? Did that go in your nose? Did it? Tears. Did I don't it? know. I, I look like I'm, it might have. It, it, it fell a little bit. I'm really excited. Let's see. That's not bad. That's a lot oh. more more muted than the um, the vanilla one. That's delicious. Oh, I really like this guy. I rate him high. That is really good. I like this one. Um, so, out of five stars. Thank you, thank you. Five. Okay. Ooh, five. And I, I don't do wait. that often. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't even know this on, is really of all good. the episodes if you've ever read I have it. once, I think, Oh, prior. was it the Susan Minello? Susan Minello? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But this, I, th this is really good. Yeah, this is definitely good. I would rate it a five, too. And um, is this bottle price wise? Because I have seen it before, but I cannot remember the price. I'm gonna. You don't have to look it up yet. Shoot, we'll I'm I'm trying to think though. I, I I feel like it's on the pricier side. And that's the thing is I can't remember now if I got it. <laughs> Thank you, friend. Friend, friend. Thank you, Finn. Um, intrinsic. I'm pretty Ooh. sure it was like eighteen dollars. What do you think? Eighteen. It is nineteen forty nine. Nice. I was gonna price. say twenty, and then I was like, I'm gonna go down a little it's, bit. It's it's a good price, but um, it's delicious. I totally. This is the first bottle that I actually just got based on the design because I like the way it looks. Hints of blackberry and cherry. Keep going. Is what I taste. Let me see. Does it say anything? Oh, again, this is another one. Street art bears an uncanny resemblance to winemaking for both the environment effects, the final art resulting in a collaboration between artists and landscape. But we are not going to tell you what grapes or anything. <laughs> I do love the art. It is. It's, it's a pretty so bottle. Pretty. I will be keeping this one. But that's strictly why I bought it. But man, that tastes good. That's smooth. I taste cherries and blackberries. And it smells good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the cherry. And it's so smooth. I love that. Love that. I like that too. Um, this one, for me, that I think, I feel like it's a semi-dry. It's not completely dry. Mm -hmm. Um it's got like a smooth finish. Yep. Not a bad aftertaste. And again, definitely I'm not bad. definitely so tasting the dark fruits that you're, you're naming. And it smells great. It's the aroma. delicious. I have realized like when I pour wine, if it's not dark, I'm like, I'm probably not going to like it. Yeah. It is really weird. And I'm not sure. Because you're like, mm, it's going to be too sweet. Or... I, and this has like a dark coloring. It's. And who knows? Look at the legs on this bitch. Who knows? This may taste better too because you used an aerator. It's true. So we just started using those. Yeah. Which actually, I swear to God, when we first got it, we I remember having a glass without the aerator and then doing it with, and I was like, it you, fucking makes a difference. You can taste the difference. It makes definitely. a difference. So. We started with the wine. Now we're gonna move on to the cheese. All right, this cheese. Is <laughs> she really said it like she said really it like this excited bitch. about it. <laughs> this cheese. So it's this one, mm -hmm. and it's also over here. It okay. is a French onion Havarti. Ooh, Ooh I like Havarti. 
Let's do it. <laughs> oh, I smelled it and it smelled good. That is so good. I mean, mm. I knew I was going to like it because I like French onion dip. I like French onion soup. That is soup. so good. This cheese is amazing. It smells amazing. Oh my I God, smelled it, it before I even tasted it. And it's creamy, mm -hmm. but it's subtle, but it's not. Oh, my God. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's good. My cheese guy was like this Ooh, one. Ooh, it's going to rival for me oh. because I, I love, love that tequila habanero, but this is just mm. as good. They have two different, totally different flavors, but this is creamy. I, I need another one. Oh my two. god, it is delicious. Did I venture out of it? Uh uh. Is that the same one? Nope, okay. same. I got two. That is so. That would be good in a grilled cheese with mm -hmm. sourdough bread. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Oh my god. Well, because it reminds me, like I said, of French so onion bad. soup, because they usually sometimes they crumble the sourdough on top and melt the. The cheese. Actually, this melted on top of French onion soup. <gasps> Ooh. Oh my god. I'm excited <laughs> for what my future holds. <laughs> oh my god, I need a block of that. That's really good. Oh my god, we bought little uh cast iron dishes for French onion soup. Specifically, Ooh. they're little Dutch ovens. Mm -hmm. They're so cute. <laughs> That sounds good. But I think when I finally, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when I finally make French onion, I might put shredded, the, shred this cheese on top. Oh, you have to let me know how it tastes because that sounds mm. like it. I know, I know. Mm. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, it's really good. I gave some to Bill earlier, and I had not tried it, but I was like, I think you're gonna like it, and he was like, Oh, that's. So, mm. what are those? So they have what? cuttlefish chips. Cuttlefish? I don't know where they are. They're in our pantry. I didn't try it. Um, Bill was eating it like it was Fritos. It smelled. So I can't tell you how it smelled because it's not PG thirteen. It smelled really bad. But we'll just put it like that. Like rotten fish. Rotten fish. Maybe fish um, food. It smelled bad, so it like made us scared. We were thinking about trying it. I mean, I'll we try could. it if you try it. If Bill gets it out of the pantry, we'll try the it. The other thing was like the shrimp thing. That tasted good to me because it tasted like my not listening. My day, it's fish fry. Mm. Where no, is it? No, but we went. Um, in we went to it's what? an Asian market called United Noodle in Woodbury. Here. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's nice. We went in Woodbury and we were like walking around and we like to go because obviously we lived in Japan and they have a lot of things that we used to eat. Eat all the time. Eat. So there is one specifically, a marinade I love. It's from <laughs> Yakiniku, which is a restaurant I loved. They were sold out, and I already used all my marinade, and I'm really sad. Oh. Um, but so we like to get different, like, flavors of chips, or we like to try new things, right? Yeah. Well, if, and you, <laughs> if you guys go back to Osaka, was it Osaka, or where, where were you? Where was he stationed? Okinawa. Okinawa. Did I say Osaka? Yes, you did. <laughs> Okinawa. If you go back... Let me know. So we would like to do that trip. These chips are called cuttlefish. Like actual. But I think it's uh, Korean and not that the is act, not Japanese. Not that, that is but not, not Japanese. Act, the actual cuttlefish. Or no, did you it say has that? actual cuttlefish stuff in it. I'm scared. So the smell. I don't want to do that. I have a very potent. It's in the shape of a cuttlefish, too. Look at it. It has a little head. It looks like something else, but yeah, it's like in the shape of a cuttlefish. I don't, I'm, try, I'm holding my breath right now because if I smell it, I'm going to be like, cheers. Good luck.
I've had worse. It's not too bad, but I still gotta get the taste out. It's nasty. That's not good. I don't get it. Oh man. I've had worse. It was now the worst thing I've put in my mouth. I didn't even want to tell you what my fingers smell like. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you can guess. Um, Ooh. Would I buy them on purpose? No. Would I eat them if I was starving? Yes. <laughs> I just nodded. <laughs> because if it came down to it and I had no food and I was starving, yeah, I would be eating them. But right now we can be picky because we, we can our, be picky. We have our nice cheeses. We're very privileged in this moment. Oh, my goodness. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I oh. definitely won't buy them again. I'm just trying to get that smell out of my fingers. Here we go. Mine doesn't think, smell. Can you say a row of piece of meat? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about that row of piece of meat. <laughs> I had put on like scented lotion, so I can't smell mm, the cuttlefish. Here we go. All right. So, I'm trying to say why I'm. <laughs> Chewing. <clears throat> so today's episode. <laughs> I'm really excited about it, by the way. Very excited about this. We decided to do a kind of a theme of what would you do? Paranormal edition. So we're going to watch some paranormal type videos and we're going to kind of talk about what we would do if we were in those situations. Yep. There's some pretty incredible stuff. So. We're gonna go ahead and watch it. It's the first video. And you guys put in the comments what yeah. you would do yes. in each of these situations too, because I'm really curious. I think all of us would react so wildly different. I know. <laughs> so I'm curious to see what our, our viewers right. would, would do in these situations. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna do the first one. It's a hospital one. Let's go. Here we go a hospital in Argentina where a security guard had been doing the night shift when out of nowhere something pretty strange was caught on camera. The hospital in question is known as the Finocetto Sanatorium which is located in the city of Buenos Aires. Not much is known about this hospital except that it might be haunted. This notion had just become popular recently when surveillance footage from inside the hospital captured this. At around 3 in the morning a security guard is filling out some paperwork when he looks across at the entrance and sees an old woman walking through the automatic doors. He promptly gets up and receives the old lady. According to the guard, this is exactly what happened that morning. But, when looking over at the video that was taken during this time, a different story is told. This is the footage. All the details of the security guard story check out, except for one, the old woman that supposedly walked in and met with him. No one else is seen, except the guard. Strangely though, we can see the doors opening as though someone had walked in. Further adding to the strangeness, the guard is seen conversing with someone, but they don't appear to be there or anywhere in sight. The video on its own is creepy, but it's the story that makes it creepier. It's the following detail, though, that makes it a whole lot spooky. According to the guard, after attending the old lady and offering her a wheelchair because of how frail she looked, she made her way to the elevator. She then told the guard she was going to the ninth floor to look for the ID and belongings of a patient who had passed away the day before. She proceeds to enter the elevator and is never seen again. As it turns out, though, 
The name of the woman, which the guard had written down on his clipboard, was in fact a patient of the hospital who had passed away the day before. I got goosebumps. Right here. Oh, like, shit. When out of nowhere, something pretty strange was caught on camera. The hospital in question so, is the So, I mean, how, how compelling is that? That, especially because he wrote down the name, how would he know that? He would not have, first of all. And it's so weird to me, too, because uh, normally it's flip-flop. It's where you pick something up on camera, but someone doesn't see it. Right. And in this case, it it's is him seeing it, but we're not seeing it on camera. Nobody else does. What would... what would... Oh, okay. What would you do? So he had to have had... I mean, putting myself in his situation, right... Letting in a frail woman in, I would have put my hand on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. I would have, like, helped, right? Right. So that's, like... And coming from... See, I'm coming from the law enforcement side of it. Not necessarily law enforcement, but, like, working at the jail. There's only so much you can do. Like, I'm thinking of maybe he didn't touch her because of, like... You got to make sure you're careful of how you're touching someone. And maybe that's why he didn't reach out. And maybe that's why he went and got the wheelchair instead. But most people, like, if they're so frail, oh, they would put... they would be like, hey, oh, do you need help? Or they would do hook an help? arm so underneath. I'm, I'm going to guess that, that he probably had some sort of physical contact with her. Just because I, that's what I would have done. I would have been like, let me, let me help you. Because he does grab the clipboard. And he goes over there, but maybe he's like, oh, she's like teetering or something like that. And that's why he went and grabbed right. the... I don't... If So are you asking what I would have done if during he, this situation or like after he, knowing that lady didn't exist? Like, um, oh. Kind of both. Like what would... So no, I would say after. Like let's... If you were the guard and afterwards you watch this video mm -hmm. and you didn't see anything, but you know for a fact you were talking to someone. I feel like I would have wanted to check myself into an institution. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, I would have been like, no. No. Fucking t I know I touched her. She was there. The doors opened. He did all of the things mm -hmm. like that I would have done. But yep. having, having watched it in, like, a reverse, replaying it and not <laughs> seeing anything, I would have been like, I'm fucking losing my goddamn mind. To me, that would be great evidence of the paranormal. And for me, what's, more com what's compelling about it, and not that he, looking at it as a he's crazy thing is the fact that he was able to write her name down so that means that he knew he that information clearly was speaking there's no way he would have known that information right. so what okay mix that what would you have done watching that i if that was you and then you had to re-watch that and be like oh there was nobody there was someone actually there what how what would you how would you have felt I would have been frustrated because I wouldn't have had any documentation other than that video. But I also, too, if I had her name and stuff, mm -hmm. um, not knowing what they have in the computer system, and security I would have... guards do not know. Right. I would have went to, Those like, things. a hospital personnel, described what she looked like, what I saw, and then had them pull up her picture. Because they're going to have her picture in there, in the database, right? and pull it up to say... Okay. So you would be more, see, I, I went more reactive or um, emotional with it. You would have been more like, I'm more let's that, find the... I'm more investigative type. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm so going to tell them sense. who I saw, describe it. And I'm like, And then I'm I want to see a picture. See, and I'm like, I'm never wrong. I know this happened. Yeah. And then if Except, I saw a picture, then I know I'm not cr crazy. But there, I don't think anyone looking at that could think he was crazy because he knew he, the name. No, right. And, and the door's open. And he was acting so normal. Like, there was nothing about his behavior that looked off. Like, nothing. And looking further into it, 
um, because of it. I mean, and that's kind of what frustrates me. I get it because of his line of work, you know, and sometimes you carry a, a, a weapon and stuff like that. Uh, but they're they did in a, a different country, so probably yeah. not. Well, they, they looked a little bit into, because I looked a little bit into that, they looked a little bit into the case and, you know, they did do like, um, not a drug test, um, they did a blood test and stuff like that just to make sure that he wasn't. He was fucked. That he didn't have anything in his system, stuff like that. But how like was the job doors? Did. How would he have known the name? Like, exactly. The whole thing is just so fucking weird. I mean, he didn't get fired or anything, and it was voluntary. I would hope he not. didn't have to give that. He just gave it for his peace of mind. God damn. Probably because he felt crazy because he's talking to this lady that doesn't show up on the was camera. Was not existing. Yeah. It's crazy. So this next one is just kind of like a home video. I have not seen this one. So, I'm so that's what I'm going to say. It's a home curious. video. I named all these videos. I just don't have the actual names. I, I didn't want to say the names. So video number two. Because I didn't want to say the names because then it kind of gives away everything. Nope. So here Let's is. Let's do it. Oh, there's 9.7 the million one. views on this. I'm Must be good. I'm going to go down here and drag it back. Ready? Okay, so I will say I'm stupid for drinking. Uh, that knife fell out of that little fucking knife container thingy. No. 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 Is this all because, the, dude, this is getting dangerous, bro. You're gonna cut yourself. You need to be careful. Fucking no. Actually, I'm. Oh, uh, what the fuck just happened? Right in front of my fucking face. Fucking shit. No. It's a regular old fucking knife container thingy. <laughs> No, it's not. I just want. I'm not even hungry anymore. That would totally be me. I'm not even hungry anymore. So that one to me, in that situation, I don't know what I would do. You know, I can always say all day, every day, when I'm watching these videos or like when I'm watching a scary movie, I would be God. Look, I would move okay, out. Okay, just care. Look at how the knife in the bowl is set right there. Mm hmm. I would have fucking taken all those goddamn knives out and I would have put them in a fucking drawer. I if, know. If, if that had happened. And that's like, I, I don't know if that's considered poltergeist activity because of how it was just one knife. Usually poltergeist, like it's that. like random stuff flying out. Yeah. But that was just one. And, and I've watched this um, user. I can't remember what his name is. It's not showing up on there. But I, I watched some of his other videos. He has some stuff that happens in his house. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, that was sp specific. <laughs> like, it, the, the knife came out. It was the just way one. it landed. Boop. What would you do in that situation? I would take all my knives and I would put them in a drawer. Mm -hmm. Even if I knew I was being maybe irrational, but not really. But he caught on. Okay, so... This is where I'm thinking, did he do this? Why was it being recorded? The only thing I can think of is he did something stupid earlier and he was recording because he had the, that knife. Because he was talking about that knife. He's like, okay, I shouldn't have been drinking because I put this knife like this. And then that came out. But I don't what know. are the odds? Uh, okay. So, I so know. I, now <laughs> thinking more into it. When I first watched it, I'm like, absolutely fucking not. But the more I think about it, I'm like, well, no, that would be, I mean, if you like strung it with like fishing wire or something and just fucking yanked it, it could happen. I know. I'm going to have to watch it. But how were they like recording at that exact I'm moment? Well, I'm going to have to watch it offline to see, because I didn't see anything. That's what I was looking for. I was looking to see if I saw a string, I saw any glitch, any editing, anything like that, but... I if, don't know. If it happened know. with my knife set right now, and that that exact situation happened, those that shit would be put in a drawer very fast. And I would be terrified. I'd probably call somebody to come cleanse my house. Well, see, and that's why I had a hard time and I was back and forth on it because 
The way that flew out of that, remember when I told you about the bottle of wine? That's exactly what happened. It looked so fake. I didn't obviously getting on. No, you get didn't. It, I didn't get it and on video. Had you sat there with your video, would you have gotten it again? I don't know. But if I had a video camera or some kind of recording in the kitchen to show that, right. that's how fake it fake it looked. It just it looked like it. Someone yanked the bottle out yeah. and it came out of the the door and like. So splattered. I'm I'm mixed on this. I Same feel here. like I Same. Because I don't like when people say, hey, I don't believe what you see. Mm -hmm. That, like, infuriates the shit out of me. But people for TikTok will do anything for views. Oh, yeah. And, like, something like that, I can see yep. it being faked. Yeah. And it's very convenient. They recorded, like, the exact moment. Right. So I'm going to leave it at that. So we're in the middle on that. I don't yes. know. It could be real, it could be fake, but I just know with the velocity that it came out, it kind of reminded me of oh, the, the wine. I agree. The wine bottle, and I was like, damn it. I'm like, I wish I would have been able to record yeah, it. Agreed. But, you know, some people have their phones all the time, obviously, when they're cooking ramen. <laughs> yeah. Not me. When I cook ramen, I definitely I record everything. <laughs> But yeah, so that was that why that was the reason why I was like in the middle on it. I'm like, God, I'm like, I feel bad that I'm saying it looks so hokey if it was real. But at the same time, it's so hard when you know, it's some when you see those videos when mm -hmm. they're like spot on where the action's happening. You're like, how did you get that? Agreed. It's different. Like if it happens on a camera that's mounted in the corner and stuff like that like, like the you... hospital one i right. believe that 100 percent. that one was believable that one does not trip me out in that sense at right all. so this one is the one that you sent me uh I did. this one I i'll tell you why after we watch it kind of hit home for me it's ugh. all right let's hear Freaks it me out. okay let me go down hit play my son's camera monitor alerted in the middle of the night. I checked it and saw my wife and son sitting on the bed. They weren't my wife and son. I'm a nurse and I currently work nights. It's a total drag but I'm hopeful I can go today soon since some coworkers are planning retirements. Anyway, I was working one night when just after 3 a.m. my son's monitor alerted me to sound and movement. No big deal at all, he probably coughed loudly or sneezed or something. He's three now so he generally sleeps all night. I bring it up on my phone and I see him and my wife sitting on the bed. Again, no big deal. He might have cried out or gotten scared or something. I was about to close the app when I noticed they were acting strange, almost creepy. And when I say almost creepy, I mean creepy as balls. They were sitting on the bed together both of them just staring up at the camera with blank, emotionless stares. The night vision is black and white, so they had white, eerie looking eyes. They didn't move at all aside from their visible breathing, they just sat there staring at the camera. I close the app and give my wife a call to make sure everything is okay. I never get to call home on lunch so in a way this is kind of nice to get to talk to my family while at work. It rings a couple times before she answers with a very groggy hello. It was like she was dead asleep when I called and she looked wide awake when on the camera. Hey, you guys okay? Huh? Yeah. Buddy came in like 15 minutes ago. Seemed scared so I said he could sleep with mama. I'm confused here since I saw them in his room a minute ago. Literally 60 seconds had passed since I closed the app and made the call. Wait, so you guys are in bed? Yeah, I fell back asleep right away. Everything okay? Everybody keeps waking me up. She's kind of annoyed. Hang on a sec. I put her on speaker and bring up the app, hoping I don't see it. When the app loads I get that pang of intense nervousness in my stomach that I haven't had in a long time, since I was a kid in school and realized while I was eating breakfast a paper or something was due that day and I hadn't done it. My heart leaps into my throat. My wife and son are sitting on his bed looking up at the camera, same emotionless stares. Hello, you guys are in bed right? Yeah, we're trying to sleep. Well I'm looking at his camera and I see you two sitting on his bed. Huh, no, we're in our bed. I know that's what you mean, but I'm looking at his bed and you two are in there. Hang on, she says. She's quiet for a sec while she brings up the camera on her phone. I hear this guttural, terrified gasp, like she had sucked all the air in the room into her lungs filling them to capacity. I don't hear this kind of gasp from my wife often, usually only when she's truly afraid like during a jump scare in a movie or one time when we turned her back on our son for literally a second and he was down by the mailbox inches from the road. I hear rustling of sheets and the line goes dead. Of course now I'm absolutely terrified myself so I immediately call back. It goes to voicemail so I call again. 
I call again and again with no answer. Finally after about 4 minutes she calls me. I tell you that 4 minutes felt like 40 years. Hey, what's happening? I ask. She's absolutely hysterical and crying, I can't understand a word she says. Stop, slow down for just a second, I say. She slows down enough to explain they are in the car and driving to her parents. She looked at the camera and when she saw what was on it she got up and grabbed our son and rushed downstairs and out the door. Didn't even close the garage. Don't worry about it, I said. I'll drive by when I get off and close it. We live in a generally safe neighborhood so I'm not too concerned the door is up. You will not go in there. She says, hell no, I return. Why are we on the camera? She asked, is it a recording? I don't know, I return. I'm gonna keep watching it and see if there's anything I can tell. Do our code words with Buddy. We have code words because we're nerds. We've seen too many pod people and imposter movies, so we decided a long time ago to make code words with each other to be able to tell if one of us was an imposter. We have a couple code words, but we also have a three sentence story we recite together, each saying a different part alternately of each other. I hear her on the phone saying the things we taught our son. He giggles as he says them since he thinks they're a joke and doesn't have any idea of the real meaning. We're both convinced he's our son. My wife then says our part and I'm convinced she's her. We made up these words as a complete joke to ourselves. I never once in my life ever imagined we'd actually need them. Unreal. She got to her parents safely and it was hard to hang up. I told her we'll figure it out in the morning, hopefully just a glitch. She said she didn't think it was a glitch. When she was running out she had to run by our son's room and the door was open. There's a little flashing light on the back of the camera that indicates it's connected to the internet. It gives off just enough light that when she ran by she thought she saw, out of the corner of her eye, a shadowy outline of what could have been an adult sitting on our son's bed. It sends chills down my spine to think about. Knowing they were safe and out of the house is the only thing that kept me at work that night. It was a long four hours but I kept checking the camera every chance I got. Sure enough, they were still sitting on the bed staring up at the camera with emotionless gazes. I studied them to see if I could see any pattern, from their breathing to their blinking. Their breathing was steady and looked normal. It was their blinking that would tell me if this was just some kind of bizarre, time loop freak accident video or not. I intently stare at my phone and count the seconds between each blink, telling myself if this is a loop then their blinks should be even and occur at the same time each time. There was no pattern to their blinking, it was erratic and random, just as a person blinking should be. The passing hours are what finally sealed the deal that this was not a weird loop video of some kind. My son's window is visible on camera and I can see on camera that it is getting lighter outside his room. His curtains keep out just enough light to prevent the camera from exiting night vision, but lets in just enough to be able to tell the sun is rising. I try to figure out what the hell I'm going to do before I leave work. Calling the police comes to mind, but I talk myself out of it. First of all what am I supposed to say? Someone is in my house that looks like my wife but isn't. Worse yet, what if they are entities of some kind and the police do go over and it kills them or something? I decide to tell coworker about it. He's a firm believer in the paranormal and might have a suggestion. I show him the video and tell him the story. His initial response of that's creepy as fuck doesn't help much, but he says he wants to go over and check it out. He says we both should to see if not my wife will try and act like my wife. I tell him absolutely not and he says we should at least go to the house even if we don't go in. I agree on that since I wanted to close the garage. We got to my house and walked around the perimeter first. Not sure what we wanted to accomplish by that, but it felt like something we should do. The curtains were all drawn since nobody was there to open them in the morning, so we couldn't see anything. I went to close the garage and suddenly had this overwhelming urge to go inside and investigate, it was like I just had to know what was going on. So in we went. We walked through the kitchen towards the foyer where the stairs are. It's so quiet in our house right now you could hear a feather drop, forget the pin. We stop at the bottom of the stairs and wait a few seconds. I look at the camera again and they are still sitting there. I've never been so scared in my life. My coworker puts his foot on the first step and I suddenly say stop loudly. Forget this, we're out of here, I tell him. Come on, I start making my way back to the kitchen. We hear a loud creak in the floor from upstairs. It's my son's room. He has a very loud, creaky board right in the middle of his floor that's almost impossible not to step on. My wife and are still deciding if we ever want to fix it because it will alert us if he's ever up to no good when he gets older trying to sneak out or something. Come on, come on, come on. I yell as I motion for him to move his ass. We're out of the house in about two seconds. Out on the street I check my phone. Now only not my son was sitting on the bed, same blank stare. Not my wife was gone. Holy shit. My coworker says, that was stupid as fuck of us. Do not tell my wife we went inside. She would be so ungodly mad if she found out what we just did. I use my garage door opener in my car to close the door. Before we leave I look at the camera again. Not my wife is back on the bed with not my son, both staring blankly up at the camera, blinking every few seconds. That was all about four days ago now. Not my wife and not my son are still sitting on the bed staring up at the camera. They haven't moved a millimeter. We obviously haven't gone back to our house. What do we do? Okay. So, yeah, I would not go back in that fucking house. Also, I would have called the cops and I would have had my spouse come stand out front. But I would have also showed them the video so that they know right. that we were being factual. That one gives me the easy There's bees. so much and, to wrap up in and that. And I was telling Myra during this that that reminded me of her house. Yep. Me too. <laughs> because 
<sighs> me going into her house, you could feel it, you can hear it. When we were recording last time, you could hear somebody walk above in the middle of the room. And it was day daylight it was day out. It was daylight. Keep in so. mind. And that's that's what I was saying too, is like um it just brings back to when we were talking about the mimics and stuff like that, when I told you I would hear so bad. Casper calling my name mm -hmm. or I hear Gio going, Mommy or something like that. Like right. it would be that's his exactly actual voice. And stuff. And you know, I I haven't actually seen any one standing there. I did tell you about and our um, episode, um, our paranormal history, my, the college edition, my college story, where oh, I would yes. see, um, or and actually, sorry, it wasn't, was it, the bunny? it was right before college. No, it was when I was living in the Egan house, the apartment, and I told you that I saw Casper, I thought it was him, and he was turned mm -hmm. around, and then he turned around and his eyes were all black and stuff like that, but he wasn't actually there. But it looked like his physical form, like it was solid. It wasn't see-through or anything like that. So for me, that's why the story creeped me out too, because like all the mimic stuff that we've had happen in our in our house, I told Gio we practice what to do if he thinks something uh, sounds the like code mommy. Word is awesome. I need I love we that. need to do that because I told him what to do. If you think it's mommy, but it doesn't seem like mommy, what to do? Right. You know, I kind of like that um, like short that. video I. I don't know if I sent it to you yet. It's called I Heard It Too. And it's mm -hmm. like, a, it's a mimic for video kind of like yeah. that where the little girl's like, it's like, I told you about it. Like, it was like, Caroline, come downstairs. Yeah. And she thought it was her mom. And then her mom like snatched her in the clouds. And she's like, I heard it too. But it wasn't her mom mm -hmm. saying it. But mm -hmm. this creeped me out because of the whole solid mm -hmm. mass thing where they're sitting there, they're staring right. at the camera. Like, the why are they staring at the camera? And then also, it wasn't just like wispy ghosts because they heard the creaking of her. Right. The mom that was like gone. the mom was gone. So I'm curious to know, did they stay in the house? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't like, look up that one. What's the update for that? I didn't look that one up to see if there was like a follow up. Ooh. I don't know if I would be able to return back to the house. That'd be hard. But yeah, like you said, what would I do? I would probably have to go look. I would have to make sure that he. Got out of the house with Cat or with Casper with Gio, <laughs> brought him far away, and oh I would have to God. go in by myself because I wouldn't want anything to happen to them. I, I would, would have to feel go in. more comfortable me going in than Same. Bill or Leslie. Same. Me. I would have to go in and I have to look. But the thing that was scary is that the, when the wife went past, she saw an adult sitting on his bed. That's creepy. And then it brings up the whole thing about your. Um, girl you watch on TikTok, the anti-matrix, like, is it across dimension and they're sitting because they're stuck like, and they're just staring it? off? But I... But that but seems something more... something like that, they know the camera's right there. That so seems it's more like a, sinister to me. Yes, I agree. Ooh. Ew. What do you guys think? Because that... Okay, what would you... <sighs> what, would, what would you do if that happened? I would have the same reaction as the wife. I would get out of same. there. I'd be out. I'd be like, I'd nope. take my animals and I'd be like, you know, and obviously we don't have the, child, the boys anymore. Like, I would just take Gio and I'd be like, it's time to go. But the thing that creeps me out is I don't know what the time distance was between when the, the little boy got scared and went into right. the mom's room. But that's what creeps me out is that they were actually in the little boy's room sitting on the bed. It was. And they were looking at the camera. Yeah, it was like, oh, you, you know, was it something that was trying to possess their bodies? Because why it, was it? Because uh, why was it only the mom and the the kid, not the dad? That's creepy. That creeps me out, and it always freaks me out. I don't like that. I don't like possession or anything like that. No. So, anyways, yeah, that was creepy. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts on that one. Pause. Pause.